As a woman, I'm going to give you the absolute lowdown. Mm. She had a very rusty bottom, but that happens to us older ladies. Um, Do you want to see all these people? And I'm like, are they armed with baklava? Because I'm not seeing anybody else until they're really <laughs> The Amazon orders just turned off. Thank you. Wait, one second. <laughs> That's all right. Hello, mate. Cheers. Chin chin, sweetie. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are really, 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 really <laughs> excited to be talking to Chris and Marianne from Tread the Globe. Now, I am so excited for this because oh. this is the first van life channel that I really got into, I think. Right. Stephen really? Should, yeah, Steve has been watching all sorts of... I watch of them all. I watch them Everyone all. for a long oh, wow. time. But I think you two are really relatable. Oh. You're not on your first trip. You're not exploring the world for the first time. So you, you've got a bit more depth. Oh, thanks. And a bit of a different perspective to a lot of the channels that that are traditional or are really popular van life channels. So that's why I love you. Oh, thank oh. you. I'm feeling the love. Honestly, that's, that's really... <laughs> That's very flattering. Thank you so much. Well, it's not just to be flattering. It, I genuinely it, feel that way. So, so I don't want to cover everything that everybody knows already. Right, you've done a few of these interview things, haven't yeah. you? This is more a chat with friends. We're just chatting. Fantastic. So, my first question is, how long have you two known each other? How did you get together? We're going right back to the beginning. Should we say too long at this point? Should we say too long? No. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we met in. Uh, Is it twenty five? Nineteen ninety five. Years. And uh, we were actually blind dated, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> we were. Oh wow. I was I was living with a with a um, a friend that I worked with in London, mm -hmm. and um, he went out one night after work, met a girl, fell in love, and it was my birthday, and he said, "Hey, my girlfriend's friends up." Should we all go out for your birthday? And I was like, why not? And it literally and was your birthday. It you was my me. birthday. <laughs> what a present. <laughs> yeah. oh. And, and uh, it was actually the, 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 the girl, Kate, was the one that Marianne donated a kidney to. Um, wow. And, uh, I felt I owed her something. You know? <laughs> Come on. I yeah, feel even more special now. <laughs> yeah, you found me the, like, the man of my dreams. I'll let you have a kidney. And, it it uh, went something like that. Oh. Yeah, we, we yeah we, we we went out to be the first day. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the rest is history. Rest is we history. were actually we were actually engaged um, six months after we met. Yeah, and we, and were, we married. were married a yeah. year and a week. A after year we and met. a week after we met. There we go. Love at first yeah. sight, clearly. Yeah, it really. And she's still all right. She's still oh, all right. Thank you. <laughs> 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 oh my god, we got them laughing! Yay! Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that cackle that I... <laughs> oh yeah, we do cackle. <laughs> Brilliant. Have you always travelled through all through, through the whole of your marriage? Have you always gone yeah. on holidays and expeditions? And Yeah, Look, both of us come from uh, sort of like nomadic parents. So mm. um, my dad has sailed the transatlantic. Um, he's ridden his motorbike wow. across Morocco, North Africa. In fact, uh, when Russia fragmented, he actually watched the news, saw that in uh, Latvia, Ukraine and uh, Russia, there was a lot of poverty and people struggling. So he actually loaded his car with loads of woolly jumpers and drove to Moscow, depositing jumpers and oh. kids' crayons and things on the way. So my dad has always, hasn't he, been very nomadic. He has. Um, so, we've, yeah. we've, so I grew up, uh, my sister was born on a boat. Uh, we've lived in vans and camper vans and uh, I've done so much travel. I've lived abroad. Yeah, my my same, my dad you? was in uh, worked for British Airways for many years, so um, I had really mm. cool holidays. And he was mm. we were posted overseas, so I lived in Singapore and yeah. Australia, and wow. um, we used to have cool holidays back in the late seventies to like Africa mm. and and places that most people probably didn't go to <laughs> in those days. Wow. Very well travelled in, right? Yeah, and um, we've yeah. always kind of like, especially when the kids were a bit older, we always treated ourselves with that. You know that three weeks and Borneo. We've we've been to Borneo quite a few times because we're keen scuba divers. 
Um, yeah, and we and just love jungle tracking and doing like crazy yeah. stuff. All our kids are, are very well travelled. One of them lived in New Ze in uh, Australia for a couple of years. They've all done the Far East, uh, some of America. Wow. So I think we just know. In fact, we took we took the kids when they were about fourteen. We we got three 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 sons, and uh, we took them when they were about fourteen. We were like, mm. okay, we're going to book a flight to Bangkok fly down to Phuket, we've got three weeks, we get the map and we're like, where do you want to go? And uh, that was oh. that was their first backpacking experience. And it yeah. was, it so, kind of made, the, giving them the travel bug too, so. Yeah, they, they all love travel, don't they? See, you're so, so relatable. Relatable, that's what I was thinking. That's the it's, uh, yeah, it's, these are uh, We've real, got three boys as well. Yeah, and, and oh. these are real oh. aspirations that we have for our mm. boys. Our eldest is 16 and is going to Borneo yeah. this summer. Oh, and I'm really? just so yeah. envious. Oh, honestly. Like, can I go uh, and make sure all the, all the children brush their teeth? Obviously, they're 16-year-old <laughs> men now, but obviously they need someone to make sure they brush their teeth uh, or something. Yeah. Borneo. Oh, oh, Borneo is absolutely fascinating. We, um, we learned to scuba dive in Borneo. We go, we've probably wow. been 14 times in a lot of Borneo. Uh, absolutely <laughs> love it. We climbed, yeah, we climbed Mount Kinabalu as well. Yeah. Um, which is the highest mountain in, in Southeast Asia. Marianne had the brainwave. We bought the Lonely Planets book. <laughs> yeah. And she looked thought. at this picture and she went, that's amazing. I'm like, yeah, if you want to climb a mountain. And she was like, let's do it. And we had like yeah. eight months till the holiday was booked. And she said, it's an excuse to get fit. You know that New Year's resolution? Um, the problem was we climbed mm. our local hill, which is 400 meters. Yeah, um, maybe twice. <laughs> twice, yeah. and then turned up and tried to climb <laughs> a, a yeah. 4,300 4, meter but we did it. mountain. We did do it. It was very hard, but we did do it. I wouldn't do it's it again, but I did, did it. it. <laughs> <laughs> so was Borneo your first pre-traveling in a van favorite destination or is there somewhere else in the world that you, you love more uh, i think definitely malaysia the, yeah okay. malaysia, yeah the far Borneo, east is magical yeah chris yeah. actually lived in singapore mm. um, the food you know we're yeah. foodies i'm a foodie right everything's yeah. always about yeah food. we know that <laughs> yeah. um but yeah yeah, yeah the, the far east in general is amazing um but i mean one of the beauties of of, of traveling i suppose is we try and see a country for what it actually is you know, um, we I take it as people. it is, you know, rather than sort of saying, you know, judging a country, because every country has got its good points and bad points. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's really hard when somebody says, where's your favourite country? Because they're all yeah. good for different reasons. I think yeah. we've Absolutely. always... I think we've always aspired, and that comes from our parents being very nomadic, to try to be travellers rather than tourists. Mm. So yes. we, we never go to a country and think, right, we've worked all year, now our dollar is king, we're going to go to a country and we want a holiday. So we've always, uh, even with full-time jobs, not that being a YouTuber isn't a full-time job, <laughs> as you know. Yeah. Um, we take over. But, <laughs> yeah, but as we, um, even when we had full-time jobs and we went traveling, we very much tried to get down and dirty with the locals, we used to say, didn't we? Um, oh, just to be able to give the kids, as a family holiday, give the kids that experience and to realize that it's not all about what you see right in front of you, right there at that moment, mm. and the media can't possibly mm. give you a balanced view. So for us, that was key, to go somewhere, uh, go and stay in a local Airbnb rather than a big, beautiful hotel chain group. Yeah, and I think that's, I mean, that's why when we started traveling, you know, one of the reasons we decided to go to Central America, I mean, we were visiting a mm. friend, but um, we decided to backpack to those countries that like, Ross Kemp said you shouldn't go to yeah. because of the gangs yeah. like yeah. El Salvador yeah. and Honduras and yeah. we spent five months like exploring those countries and it was absolutely amazing and the local yeah. people were amazing yeah it was all good yeah. yeah in fact we went to those countries and what was hilarious for me is Chris was like let's watch some YouTube videos about them and I was like no I don't want to see anything I want to go yeah. out and and in fact we do that don't we, we yeah we try country, not to watch too we much we try not to research too much other than what currency what language that kind of basic uh, research um, mm. and then we go there and then we come back and we watch the, the YouTube videos we're like, oh why did we Go there. Murder capital <laughs> of the world. Gun, <laughs> gang capital, capital of the world. Where, why do we go there? Yeah. It would have so, put exactly. you off going if you'd have watched it first, I guess. Exactly. Right? It does. It would exactly. do. But that's, yeah, yeah absolutely. Exactly. I think that's exactly why your, visit, your videos are so um, appealing to me. It's 
it's mm. not the tourist side. You are going to explore rather than just right, to scratch right. the surface. And I think that's... Exactly yeah. how we, we do it, absolutely. Yeah. You'll know from travelling yourselves that when you go to a tourist location, a lot mm. of the local people will speak your language and they've mm. learned from people that have told them. So I've been to bars um, in Turkey where people go, hello, darling. And I'll look at them and say, why, why would you say that? And they say, oh, because English people say hello, darling, to me. So I thought this is normal. And I'm like, no. Right. And, and okay. it's really interesting for us that we avoid mm. touristy places because they're no longer local people for local food and local... They provide fish and chips, they provide burgers. But the, and but chips. the, the local mm. places have something special. Uh, the the yeah. touristic places have something special, otherwise there wouldn't have been millions of tourists there. Absolutely, but know? they have changed yeah. to, be, uh, to be equipped for somebody who doesn't necessarily want to eat the local food. I've got to say, I, I thought you travelled, but I didn't realise this much. You are... <laughs> it's, you're way out there. They're probably the most travelled people we know. So Absolutely. Why, I admire that. No, I admire really that exciting. a lot. Isn't it? Absolutely Thank you. exciting. So as massive travellers, were your family shocked when you decided you were going to sell everything, buy a van and head off around oh. the world? Or were they... They yeah. just went, oh, just another thing they're doing. No, I guess that. Well, uh, it was funny, actually, because... Yeah. Such my parents are very old school i was brought up very career minded it's all about you know mm -hmm. business and get a good job get the house get the dogs you mm -hmm. know have the have that life that mid try and aim for that middle class lifestyle mm -hmm. and as much money as you can i think as well um, that we'd reached a really good pinnacle in our career and your dad was like why would you throw that away yeah we had i mean we had good jobs you know we've got we, we've got a beautiful house that you know the dream house mm -hmm. in the country we used to have chickens and a polytunnel and mm -hmm. You know, and, and you have what everybody sees as like the dream life. Yeah. Um, but I, I suppose for us, you know, once you, once you reach an age and you lose a couple of friends yeah. and you realise mm -hmm. you're not going to live forever, I, mm -hmm. think, I think that was when it really hit us. Um, and I was, I was like, well, we might not be here next year or two years um, or yeah. three years. And, and I think it's important to, to do what you want to do. Yeah. Mm. But I think also it, it was difficult for our friends because in their eyes, we had the dream lifestyle. Yeah. So mm. they were working towards what we had. And when we said we didn't want it, they almost questioned their purpose and their direction as well. So yeah. it took a while for friends to... And I, I think if you're, oh. if you're traveling full time and you're doing such a crazy lifestyle in most people's eyes, I don't think mm. they can really understand what it's like. Um, and know. it's quite hard to get that across. You know, the editing, the, yeah. the work in the research, the traveling, the, you know, parking in the dark and on a beach and moving every mm. day. And mm. it's quite a hard lifestyle, but very, obviously we love it. Yeah, we love it's it. It's rewarding, and, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. In fact, we have um, family members that sort of don't understand that it's a job. And then when we say it is a job, they're going, but I thought you wanted to give up work. And it's like, no, we wanted to find a job. <laughs> oh, a sustainable a way. A sustainable way of travelling. And it's just sort of like tipped over into a job. Um, but a job we yeah. love. We do <laughs> love what we do. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I can fully understand how your, your friends and family think you're crackers. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Although saying that, we've got some of those as well. <laughs> yeah. Saying that, on my side... Um, my dad literally said, that's amazing. You have to buy the Fiat Ducato Adria Twin uh, because Chris will fit in it. Because, and that's exactly the model that we bought. Um, and I said to him, right, we, uh, we've sold everything. Uh, we're about two grand short for the one we've seen up the road. He wrote a check and said, buy it. You need to start, start living your life. Fantastic. Oh. Yeah, your dad's gone. But my, I mean, my folks are like fully on board now. Oh, they now, understand it. They love it. They follow it. They watch it. everything. But it, I, um, I think it's the unknown because even now there are lots of YouTubers, content creators, whatever you want to call whatever oh. it is that we're doing and van life, um, sustainable van life. Yeah. I think a lot of people still don't quite understand what it entails. And now your parents know they're mm. completely oh, love yeah, and support what we're doing. They think what we're doing. But is that amazing. generation, I mean, it's hard to understand yeah. that, you know, you're putting everything on, on online. And what do you mean people watch it? How do you get paid? How yeah, do you earn yeah. money? It's, right. yeah, it's quite a hard thing to understand. We're still learning that. I'm still learning we're that. Still learning <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> we really are. Oh. We, we know a few full time van lifers that have explained that. Sometimes their family and friends will class them as homeless. Mm. <laughs> They're actually full time in the yeah, van. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Right. Although while Trudy was in the garage for the last three yeah. weeks, 
we we, we did feel homeless because we, really we were going homeless. from relative to relative <laughs> yeah and our relatives are so cool and they're like just come and stay with us you've got a bedroom with an ensuite and it's like we love you but we want to live in our van we love our home don't we it's, it's just, like it's just like we it, we, it's just cozy. comfort you know yeah it's very yeah. cozy i guess they've not seen you in two years as well so they just want as much time with yeah you as exactly possible. exactly yeah. absolutely so what we yeah. do is we park outside their house and we spend lots of time with them and then go back and sleep in Trudy. We know we do normally, but like I said, we haven't <laughs> yeah. had her for a while, have we? But they find yeah. it really odd. We do the same. And we only go back to Yorkshire. It's only an hour and a half up the road. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but don't you think that van lifers make the best house guests? because we oh, don't yeah. expect anyone to make beds for us or clean up after us we literally Absolutely. and sometimes we even cook for people so but uh, but then but then your friends and family they say well you can't sleep in the van i've got a spare room yeah. you know and it's like <laughs> no, they don't get it. it's not a punishment <laughs> it's true, it's true. <laughs> wait i see i think the trip that you're doing now has been in three parts so there's the pre-turkey turkey and what's coming next so in that pre-Turkey section, what was your favourite either destination or experience? Have you got one in particular or have you got one each? For van life, definitely Ireland. Oh, uh, 100%. For, mm, yeah, for backpacking, Nicaragua. Oh, wow. Yeah, Ireland was amazing. I mean, we drove the whole coastal road of Ireland. It was our yeah. first yeah. our first van life adventure. And, and, my fa um, and literally the best van life and we, we learned adventure. <laughs> Yeah, we learned quite quickly. In fact, the first night we arrived in Belfast, we got off the uh, we got off the ferry. Marianne wanted I know to what do you're this. Say uh, now. We're oh, just free. No. Stop looking at Google Maps. We're just gonna just drive until we find somewhere. And we we couldn't afford the ferry really, so we got a, a ferry at like one in the morning because it was cheaper. And we rocked mm. up in Belfast, and I said, "Okay, love, where are we going?" And she said head that way it's dark in the distance <laughs> we, that's exactly what happened we woke up next to uh, a junction outside somebody's house and on, on a, a bit of grass it yeah. was the worst parking spot ever but yeah I, i'm going off track the, the ireland was absolutely fantastic the wild atlantic way was was, was amazing um yeah. the irish the irish lover story don't they and you can just park up and oh it's just wonderful it, it's and, funny actually because mm. i I've always been, you know, had faith that everything's going to work out. Uh, but the the expression "the stars align" has really just literally it come always into does play. for us. Yeah, and yeah. we um, literally um, as our, as we all of this was happening and choosing to go into van life and choosing to become travel bloggers um, and nomadic. Mm. Our friends sent us an invite to their wedding in Donegal. Yeah, and we were we were like, why don't we just get the ferry over? and just drive the entire coastal road of Ireland or until we've seen as much as we've seen and then we'll go on somewhere else. So we did. We actually ended yeah. up spending three months in Ireland and only came back because wow. it was our youngest son's birthday. That is wow. fantastic. Yeah, we, we did the uh, Wild Atlantic Way, I think, April oh. e for Easter 2017. That's best time of year, I think, weather-wise, oh. around yeah. there. Well, we, oh, Which no, year we was in 18. it? No, ours was in 18. You did it the year before us. Right, yeah. but we I did it in two weeks as well. Oh, wow. wow. I think we did it in 16, but... No, no, no. In, yeah. It was December 2016 we did the NC500 for Christmas, Christmas and then it was the Easter after that I followed it up with the Wild Atlantic Way. So. Yeah. And did you start in the north or the south? North. Uh, we yeah. we north. got off and the ferry and turned right yeah. and went that way around and yeah. followed yeah. it around. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. arrived yeah. in Kinsale and we were like, "Yay, we've done the World Atlantic Way!" And she said, "Actually, this is the beginning." And I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought, "Don't I thought. say that." <laughs> so she actually made us a little sign that said, "You finished." Yeah, because the they didn't Atlantic have a way. sign for coming the other way. Oh. We were very disappointed. We were like, yeah. "We've got to film ourselves stood in front of the sign." And, yeah, and so she one. got some A4 paper and some highlighters. We made one. And we oh. made one with her. <laughs> it was a little Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was exactly. Of course, you found someone there to make you a sign. Honestly, <laughs> it's lovely. We, we, we'd like to do that again and spend a little bit more time. I think you did three months, did you? Mm. Mm. Yeah, we, but we did the whole. Coastal we did the road. whole coastal it, it was, road. Yeah. yeah, it was incredible, absolutely yeah. incredible. But and that's only because um, obviously our kids are older. Uh, mm. We live, you know, full time, and we work from the van. So for us, yeah. it was easier. And and I look at families in vans. We've got friends in America at the moment who have got two kids that they homeschool, and. I, I could never do that. It's no. it's an incredible mm. feat. I don't know how they do it, and I admire them for it. Um, but yeah, we waited a little bit later. Until I was going to say it's hard enough to get your kids to do the homework well, after school, let alone <laughs> yeah. if you're teaching them as well. Oh, <laughs> yeah. we, we've just survived. I say survived. It's a very loose term. We've just endured two years of 
of intermittent homeschooling with the boys right. with with lockdowns yeah. and covid um, yeah, and definitely. i would never is, choose to do that at all i think there is a renewed nope. there is a renewed gratitude towards the teachers, teachers now. right oh i love my um, teachers or oh, their teachers because, they're my teachers yeah. now <laughs> <laughs> literally i don't think anyone appreciated how much work they actually do no no no. It's uh, it's interesting. So that was our lockdown, being stuck at home with with the boys. Now yours was a little more exotic, wasn't it? Well, it was different. <laughs> yeah. That, Do you think if you'd known? It was going to be eighteen months in Turkey, even though it turned out to be amazing. Do you think you'd have still stayed, or would you have turned around and come home? I think home? so. I I think you know we've driven so mm. far. It's, it was a fair drive to Istanbul. Yeah. And. Mm. You know, we were on a mission. We set that mission. We're driving around the world. We're going to go from UK to UK. You know, yeah. can we physically get all the way around the world um, in an old van? Don't listen, yeah. Trudy. I didn't mean it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and we arrived in Istanbul. We were all excited. We were like, oh, we're at the gateway of Asia. And we were, we were all on a high. Um, had three fabulous days filming and then yeah then the borders closed three days in yeah it, and, it, and it was it was the, the pandemic you know for everybody it was like the zombie apocalypse wasn't it it's like mm. you see it on the news and we we're in a foreign country and we were like you know what's the death rate is it really deadly yeah. are we going to be okay what's the medical like here because we didn't know turkey at all you know no. we'd literally only been there a few days mm -hmm. um and uh the facility we were in um we just we just decided look you know we've got water we've got access to electric showers there's a washing mm. machine because it was a football pitch with a, like a it had a small changing room and a car park to the side yes we remember that's and when we found you that's when we found you yeah, yeah oh, okay. so we so we could use the facilities there and uh we just said look we've got everything we want not necessarily everything we need and everybody in Turkey was like, what, you stayed in Farty in Old Town, Istanbul? It's the worst area. <laughs> and, uh, but, but the loveliest it was, people. It was great, you yeah, know. Yeah. It was really, really good. It um, was incredible. So I, I, yeah. don't regret, I don't regret staying there. And, you know, being in a car park for 95 days, okay, it, it was a bit challenged. Some, you had good days and bad days. But, um, mm. you know, I could be in a high rise without any yeah. fresh air mm -hmm. and it would have mm. been a lot worse. So I don't absolutely, see yeah. that we had it that bad. Yeah, absolutely. That, you know. I, I absolutely agree. Yeah. Yes. Um, the question, though, if it mm. was, would we have left the UK knowing that we We didn't we answer were the drunk? question, did we? We no. did it would we, would we <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> had we known that there was going to be sort of like what had happened, we wouldn't have mm. gone because um, no. that's one of the reasons we stayed in the car park for yeah. 95 days because... Um, when people were messaging us saying um, people have like big YouTubers have, have left um, their their vans, they've abandoned their vans and they've gone home to mum and dad because mm. you can't, you need to get out, you need to right. get home. Eamon and Beck, Trent and Ali. Every, everybody. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, people were scared, weren't I think, they? You I know? think most people did it. I know that Next Stop Everywhere, because we're friends with them, uh, they did yeah. it, they, they stayed. But we literally, I contacted all my friends, because I used to work in the hospital, our local hospital, as did Chris, uh, and I used mm. to work with a clinician, so I was phoning them saying, look, what, what's your take on this? What's your advice? And they were like, look, the virus doesn't move. People move mm. it. Just stay where you are and just put your head down and just try and avoid meeting people and we had yeah. a big long chat didn't yeah we? we had a long chat i mean it's also the fact that we would have come back to a relative's house because our house was yeah. rent is we rented. are mum and dad we couldn't go home you know, to mum and dad because um, we are mum and so dad so what do we do if we go to our elderly relatives yeah. and you don't know how dangerous this virus is you could mm -hmm. be giving it to them mm -hmm. so mm. we were just like look just stay still what will be will be it will all be all right you know it will work out and we are Good um and we're in our it home does. you know yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. uh and uh, I think we, we did it. There was another couple with us in the car park when we first arrived, a young English couple, lovely couple. Um, mm. But they, they just couldn't face. They were like, but we could be in this car park for three weeks. <laughs> and little did they know. And, uh, yeah. and I was going, yeah, but you've got everything you want. If you start driving off looking for that beach, once the police start closing the roads and mm -hmm. you may not have access to water or toilets or, yeah. 
you know, yeah. just just yeah. and they, we didn't know, did we? We didn't know didn't but know. they they ended up going mm. off looking for the, the adventure and 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 were forced to 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 fly home. They ended up flying back to the UK, mm -hmm. um, oh. and uh, we would have they would have had more fun with us in the car park. Probably. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'll think of two other people we'd love to be locked down in a car park. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's something we've never said about anyone before. Those words oh, have never come you. out. That's oh. brilliant. Yeah, our, lock, our lockdown consisted of trying to do step aerobics, growing vegetables in the muddy verge of the car park we were in. <laughs> feeding the street right. cats. Uh, feeding the street cats. <laughs> yes. uh, the, the security guard at the um, at the car park, because once we had our TV interview, um, in fact, before the TV interview, there was a security guard mm. on the facility and basically basically he was told to stay and make sure we were okay uh, so he ended up oh, getting a nice. puppy wow. uh, like a security dog puppy so i ended up doing puppy <laughs> classes yeah, which was, was great crazy. fun um and so we, we just we just got busy didn't we we learned some but, but it was just wonderful they were yeah. so welcoming everybody was so welcome and after that after that initial scary moment because you know initially it was it was a little bit frightening you know they the the managers said you know it's it's um the police have told us to close the car park mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. um so we need to move you into the corner so they can't see you mm -hmm. and we we're like oh okay <laughs> you know and it was, yeah. uh, was i mean we didn't put a lot of this on the video because obviously at the time we were in the car park um yeah and, and we didn't want to get them into trouble because they were prepared to break the rules to make sure we were okay exactly and, and it was a was very serious situation it really it was, was it? absolutely yeah. but after yeah. after the the BBC interview and then BBC mm. Turkey picked up on us and it became a little bit of a media frenzy. There were literally, we woke up one morning and there was like five or six film crews at the gate and the mm. guy going, do you want to see all these people? And I'm like, are they armed with baklava? Because I'm not seeing anybody yeah. else until they're really <laughs> <laughs> And it worked. I got loads of baklava. <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was great. Um, and then after that, like the, the local mayor of that area of Istanbul said, you guys can stay at, for the, you know until the pandemic we were quite or, a novelty weren't we we were like the tourist attraction we were. people were looking over I the car park right. like passing yeah. us food and stuff yeah. it was quite in fact, funny i have to be honest trudy is the celebrity van of turkey now she really is yes. uh, we could not drive anywhere without getting horned and beeped and people yeah. like chasing us down to, <laughs> no, we to, even, to we give even us got, biscuits or something there was one time we were up in the north of turkey on the black sea and the the police pulled us yeah. over and we were like, oh, here we go. Yeah. And the guy went, the hey, can I have a selfie? <laughs> 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 Which yeah. was like hilarious. Um, so yeah, but everybody, we had no trouble in Turkey. It was an amazing no. place. Yeah. I, I, I think it's possibly um, one of the most misunderstood countries we've ever visited. Yeah, definitely. Uh, because, you know, countries like El Salvador, it's misunderstood, but there is danger. Where Turkey is yeah. misunderstood because there is no danger. Everyone is very lovely. Uh, in fact, mm. their, culture, their culture is that any foreign visitor is a gift from God. Uh, and wow. they truly, yeah. and and the local people, the actual village people, believe that. Obviously, in the tourist mm. areas, they have been like battered down by the tourists bargaining for anything. So yeah. it's yeah. different. But the local people are, are so well, grateful for you. And, and that's visit. why we try to go, you know, to those places that. Show like you shouldn't really go to i mean the, the foreign office has got a warning on the southeast of turkey because they used yeah. to have you know terrorism from syria like the, that side of turkey but mm -hmm. we went down there and just like it was just the best it was yeah. just amazing wasn't it yeah we did um in fact overlanding sofia came uh, over to turkey because we yeah. opened um a turtle center and yeah. um when they came over, we got them to bring a lifesaver, but we said to them, do you want to do a bit of a road trip? You know, we've been down to this bit already, but there is a few places we need to go back to. And they were like, hell yeah. And we <laughs> had yeah, the we most had wonderful fun. road yeah, trip, didn't we? It was very yeah. cool. Well, Fantastic. we saw that. And, and also you have changed Lindsay's opinion um, oh. because I wanted to go there. And until actually watching your adventures there, Lindsay was kind of, I mean, is it safe to go? And what well, are the people like? It and... wasn't so much that I was worried yeah. that it wasn't safe. I just had this in my head that women weren't treated particularly well. It was quite a misogynist, oh, oh, wow. quite yeah. backward yeah. Yeah. in terms of what we yeah. experience here yeah. kind of yeah. culture. And I was like, I should, it's just not somewhere that's high on my list of places but you're not alone as a woman i'm going to give you the absolute lowdown mm. you've met male chauvinists in yes. the uk you've absolutely. met them in france in germany they're everywhere so this, isn't, this isn't a turkey thing um no. you know 
people saying I had um, when we were going through to a mosque uh, this guy came over with a headscarf and I put it on and a lady helped me put it on I went into the mosque and I got mm. so many comments saying you're being suppressed, uh, suppressed and forced oh. to do this and I was like I was like, no, no, I want to go into a mosque. Mm. I forgot my headscarf, and I'm so grateful that he gave me one for free and refused to take any money. Yeah, it was a really yeah. beautiful moment, actually. It was a actually. beautiful moment. Yeah. Um, and I have to say that as a woman of my age, I've always appreciated being my age because yeah. I now have young Turkish men will come running over. If Chris is in the van and I've gone shopping on my own, they will run over, they will grab my shopping bags and help me into the van. <laughs> That's how lovely That's... and support. They're so sweet. Many yeah. over in Turkey. There are some. I'm not going to say there aren't because they're everywhere. I mean, if you look at the the news, you see the the odd you know the odd crazy story about the news about this incident or that incident. Yeah. But then you also see that everywhere, don't you? Yeah. Mm. Turkey for vanning is mm. amazing. Yeah. You know we have. Yeah. Well, I mean, we haven't van lifed in every country by any means, no. but from our experiences from Europe, take me to Turkey anytime. I you wow. can park literally anywhere yes. you can park yes. on any land anywhere and you'll yeah. never be moved yeah. and the like, locals will come and bring you food and they'll come and have a chat tea everything in turkey involves a cup of tea and yeah. it's, it, and it's just such a fascinating of all the countries to get stuck in mm -hmm. um during a pandemic for 18 i mean 18 months you know it's a long time to be, be in mm. one country as a travel blogger or you know somebody that likes to travel Mm -hmm. um and bearing in mind we were planning to do the round the world drive in 20 months mm -hmm. you know so 18 months <laughs> in turkey was kind of a big delay a little bit off, yeah. off <laughs> you've only got off two months to do the rest <laughs> exactly but you know what a varied country you know you've got yeah. tea plantations you can go skiing and swimming in the sea the same day you know mm -hmm. um and just such a variety and good food lots of good foods thank you for bringing it to me to be honest it's Thanks on for our sharing list your yeah. Yeah, and i think it's quite well, maybe we'll meet there one day we Definitely. have to go back because obviously our involvement with the turtle place and obviously as yes. we're driving around the world we're going to be coming back through turkey in fact our turkish friends have said if you don't come back and have a celebration that you've done it we'll be very pissed <laughs> maybe after the world trip we'll organize a convoy to go to yeah, turkey convoy or something. to turkey maybe yeah sign us up with it yeah yeah Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, um, how did you get involved in the turtle? Um, that was a crazy thing, turtles, wasn't that a crazy yeah. thing? But that that, none cool. of that was obviously planned. In fact, we were in Antalya. <laughs> it was it was early summer uh, last year, and we were just at that deadline where can we get our Russian visa this year to yes. hit that weather window? And we were pushing it. We would have, we would have had to have powered across Russia to get to the to the end of Russia to ship to sort of Korea in the States. Mm. Um, and we were waiting for news about whether or not um, we could get a visa. Mm -hmm. And we had a contact who knew somebody at the Russian consulate and we, we, were, they were, we were just waiting. Is it gonna open soon? Is it gonna open soon? And we got the message saying, no, it's not yeah. opening this year. So we were like, oh, you know, cause yeah. you have to wait till next spring to go to try and go again. Yeah. Mm. Um, so we actually went to this beach where the, where the, we met the turtle lady, Sahar, uh, with a case of beer and felt quite sorry for ourselves for 24 hours. We did. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we? We did. We were like, I'm confused. What do we do? Do we carry on? <laughs> yeah. Do we go somewhere else? What yeah. is the point um, of us now? <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. And then it was like, m we spotted a woman on the beach um, picking up rubbish. She'd been dropped off by the police and was picking up rubbish. Yeah, it was very early in the morning and we saw her a couple of days in a row. And lockdown, it was during it, a lockdown. It was during a weekend. lockdown and yeah. we were like, is this like community service because <laughs> the police are dropping her off? What, what is this? What, you know, is she being forced to pick up the litter? So I went over to her because by now it's the middle of the day and it's very hot. So mm. I went over and said, you know, hi, I'm Marianne. Would you like a drink or food or something? And um, she came over and she had a glass of water. And at that point she told us her life story, which was walking on a beach with her son. She came across an open nest of um, eggs that were half being bought, uh, half being yeah. laid um, and a dead mother turtle next to it this oh. open nest that had been crushed by a car and her son turned to her and said mum we have to do something we have to help save these animals um, yeah. so she quit her job um, yeah, used, who does that? Who actually used 
all of her savings to well. uh, try and educate the local people, uh, buy wood to put round the nest to protect the nests, uh, made signage, uh, signage to go on these sticks to help the, the turtles. Mm. And at that point we thought we have to do yeah, something. Yeah, she invited mm. us down to, to her tent, which the, like the council had given her like a bigger tent, mm -hmm. but her tent, she was living in a tent like you get from Decathlon on yes. the beach yes. to, wow. to stop cars driving on the beach and to mark the nests during nesting <laughs> season, which is like mm. a good portion of the year. Yeah. And I was just like, this is just nuts. And she started off, I mean, if you've seen the video, um, it's quite an emotional video, actually. I, I cried mm. so much just editing it. I was just a constant, like, I was just, it was a really powerful yeah. thing to edit. Yeah. And when she, when, she was, when, she, when she was telling us the, the story, she started off doing the sales pitch. Yeah, I live on the beach and yeah, I, I marked the nest. And it was, she was all happy. And mm. we could just, we just sense and we were like, okay, now tell us the truth mm. and that was it she broke down we, we yeah. managed to get somebody to translate it and and that was all on the video and mm -hmm. i said do you mind if i film it and we set up these these cameras mm -hmm. and then and then i said look i said to her we'll help you yeah we i said we're committed this is yeah. why we haven't gone to russia i said we'll help you and i said we'll make sure because i said to her what do you need and she said we need a, a center i've got planning permission for a center um, but I, obviously she doesn't have any money. She said, oh. if I have a centre, people won't think I'm a crazy woman living in yeah. a tent on the beach. Yeah. I will actually be a professional that's here to look after the turtles. Yeah. And wow. I said, okay, you know, we'll get you your centre. And um, well, we made the we made yeah. the video and. But, but um, hold on, we we literally we came out of there. We've both been sobbing. We <laughs> were so upset. It was a it was a this, crazy time. This story is it's just an incredible story, and we feel really grateful and privileged that we we fell upon her. We we encountered her, which gave us the opportunity to do the right thing. And and you you couldn't walk away oh. from that story. It, you just couldn't. Yeah, it's such the a way she told it and the way we spoke. For, I mean, we, that video was. 10 minutes or whatever but we spoke yeah. for like two hours well i've just had a two-hour meeting with her yesterday <laughs> uh, wow. because the the center's still growing uh we've got more support we've got more government support but the but the uh we, we did the um we i did the video and, and did a gofundme it ended up raising i think it's raised thirty-one thousand pounds now oh, wow. wow um and the center's built which is made and there's enough money to sort of make it sustainable she gets three coach loads of kids um, from local schools going down every day to be educated on marine mm. conservation but yeah. that stretch of beach in in manavgat in antalya in, in the south of turkey mm. isn't on we, we we had two marine biologists that funnily enough we, we met in borneo um and we were like you're in between jobs can you just come and help us for a, for, a, for a month or so and they said yes yeah. so turkish airlines sponsored them to come over which was amazing <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thanks, turkish airlines and um they came and they they gathered data and and data that had been collected by sort of local universities and things like that that stretch of beach has 20 percent roughly of the whole of the mediterranean sea turtles Wow. And it wasn't even it wasn't even acknowledged on mm. any marine database. On, yeah. It oh, wasn't gosh. recognized. And it's the whole of the Mediterranean. So every yeah. single country with a beach on the Mediterranean, that portion of beach that she's protecting One with fifth. her life has right. twenty percent That's of crazy. All of the long it's an incredible thing you've and done. And she was getting I mean it's some insane, of the isn't it? you it's know, like insane. like some of the beaches in Turkey which have yeah. turtle centres on them. Yeah. You know, mm. have like a few few nests a day during yeah. nesting season we were down there one night she had a hundred turtles yeah. come up yeah wow. um, and it's just it's, it's a huge thing but the, the local authorities didn't realize that that was there and didn't realize i'm like this is ecotourism potential this is the future your this future tourism ending. right yeah. here um so mm. we met with lawyers we met with local Accountants, i was just it was just ended up being a full-time job in fact it's probably the only time i was <laughs> like i haven't got time to edit another video this it's just like yeah. you know it was really right. busy it was insane but the best project we could possibly be involved in ever absolutely and but she's just had permission for a bigger building yeah 
Uh, they've also wow. put it on the school curriculum now oh, yeah. for that whole region of Turkey. Yeah, so our friends that came over from Bor <laughs> um, that we got over, the marine biologists from Borneo, yeah, amazing. they wrote, uh, because she's obviously educating kids, so I asked them to make sure that the curriculum that she was teaching these kids was correct. So um, they've mm. now given that curriculum to the schools and it's now going to be taught wow. from September to all of the children in that entire region along the coastline as part of the school curriculum. Yay! Yay. It's good. It's good. It's just an amazing. Incredible accomplishment. And and what strikes me most is these are all things that have just come together. All the different experiences the stars that you've line. had. Exactly, the stars. Everything happens for a reason. That's one of our phrases. Mm. Isn't yeah, it? yeah. yeah we always say that as well. Yeah. We've Absolutely. got definitely got guardian angels. Yeah, there's we? definitely somebody watching oh. over yeah, us. Yeah, we do. We yeah. do feel that we have guardian angels keeping an eye on us. Oh, when you feel like that, you feel more confident. Even when we break down, there's somebody that will help, isn't there? You yeah. Know? yeah. There's yeah. always somebody. In fact, there. people say to us, "You're so lucky. You meet all the nice people." And I'm like, "But everyone's nice. Everyone's if you're nice." everyone's nice back of right. course there's something like one out of every ten thousand people's a psychopath but we I haven't mean, met many of those i mean you could you know you <laughs> drive around turkey there was <laughs> there was one time <laughs> Maybe we're psychopaths. Is that us? Maybe. <laughs> that's it. That's why. <laughs> that's why everyone's nice. Yeah. Um, there was one time in the, when we were in, in the south of Turkey, and we 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 were in that area you shouldn't go, and uh, we drove around a corner, and, and then, like there was hundreds of people stood in the road, and Ooh. we would looked at each other, and we were like, "What the hell's going on here?" And yeah. it was actually a funeral. Yeah, we went to a funeral. But you know, if you smile and say, you know, hello in the local language, and uh, they just look at you and they're like, "What are you doing here?" And where, then they bring you food. Where you come from? <laughs> they bring you food, <laughs> and it was, you know. You've seen the video, and uh, yeah. It's, yeah, it's amazing. It's just amazing. It was yeah. funny. It was funny. Literally, um, people were coming up so, because they couldn't speak English, but they could speak French. One of the guys who had come home for the funeral was from France, a Turkish right. French guy. So I speak French. So he was then saying to me, "Why are you here? Where are you going?" So I said, "We're trying to get to Gaziantep," and he said, "This road is closed. Follow me, but we have to finish the funeral first. So it was just bizarre. It was and then just... you drive over a field, yeah, and you're like, "I have amazing. no idea. I'm just following amazing. some random bloke. I don't even know who." We do follow a lot of strangers actually, don't we? Got we? In a, we got in a vehicle in, in one town, we were like, where's this place? They're like, jump in, I'll show you. And I'm in, the, I'm in there going, okay kids, don't get in cars with strangers. It's like... <laughs> Yeah. And if the girl yeah. offers you sweeties, say no. <laughs> say yeah. no. Although Unless in Turkey, just say yes. Yeah. <laughs> baklava. Yeah. Baklava, a lot of baklava. Yeah. So yeah, you're absolutely. back in the UK. We, we are. And you've had some work done on, on Trudy. Trudy. We've had lots of work done on Trudy. Is she in fine fettle now? Is she ready to go again? She's she, pretty well there, isn't she? She is. Poor Trudy, we, we took her into the garage. Um, our local mechanic, Mike, who we've known, yes, he is called Mike and the Mechanics. Um, yeah. So yeah, he's um, he's looked after all our vehicles for months, well, years, years and years. And um, I took Trudy in and he sort of took, looked at her and he was like, she's gonna fail. I was like, really? So yes, um, the next rude. day he rang me to confirm that she'd failed. Rude, I thought, very rude. rude. I thought rude. so. <laughs> Passing judgment. Uh, <laughs> exactly. So literally, um, she's been with the, the mechanics for about two and a half weeks now. I think it's longer, okay. than, longer that. than that. So no, when did wow. she come back? It was before Christmas. It Maybe, was yeah. It was before Christmas. Before Christmas. Actually. So yeah, it's so, yeah, been a month. Been a month. Yeah. Mm. And um, so yeah, her, she failed on her jacking points had rusted through. Uh, her exhaust had gone. Some of her oh. seals had gone. Um, we put a, clutch, a hole through the oil tank in yeah. Georgia. And with they, the exhaust had gone. All that. The, yeah, they've also. <laughs> So I said, can you check the clutch? And he was like, it's completely rusted through. <laughs> uh, then he said, oh, as we were checking the gearbox that where the clutch was going in, and actually there's a problem there. So you might need to go to Southampton to pick up a new gearbox. But fortunately, they um, have a friend who engineered a it's new It's been part. one of those months, actually. Yeah. And she's had five and a half days of welding. Wow. Jeez. So she had a, a rusty bottom. <laughs> she had a very rusty bottom, but that happens to us older ladies. Um, so and she's um, uh, John from Life uh, Without Bricks um, yeah. over at uh, Caravan and Camping in Wem with Jason. They yeah. fitted the motor a motorhome man. Fridge. Yeah, he yeah. he very kindly put the Dometic yeah. fridge in for us. And also check the seal the... of one of our windows um, that 
I had to admit that I actually fitted and uh, <laughs> apparently the silicon that I used wasn't uh, good for hot weather because obviously in, in Turkey, Turkey it, was it was 45 degrees some 45 days degrees, it was really 50 hot. degrees at some, yeah. <clears throat> at some point so yeah I, I used the wrong silicon and it turned to jelly and that's why it was leaking Ah, well, there you so go. But, but Trudy, no, she's pretty. She's pretty well good. Uh, she's pretty well good to go. There's a few so, other bits that we, we're trying to put a lift kit on her, but we can't get it in time. Yeah. Oh. Um, so we may have to do that in the states, yeah. just to raise the front up a little bit, because yeah. on some of those roads in Georgia and stuff, and we're gonna maybe in Mongolia, gonna have roads like that or worse. Yeah. That well, mm. Mike's gonna ship the lift kit to the states if it if it yeah. gets here. Get it fitted out there, right? Yeah, right. and then I'll get it fitted out there. I'm so, gonna find someone to pimp my ride. <laughs> <laughs> Get some giant tires put on her or something. Yeah. <laughs> that that leads us nicely onto right. the the next phase. We... You mentioned the states. Yeah. What's oh. the what's the what's the plan for the next three, six, twelve months, guys? Well, the next three months is quite easy. What what do we <laughs> want to happen, and what, what may and what's going to happen is going to be two. Okay, so <laughs> plan plan A is um, we're shipping to Charleston down uh, in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, she's currently booked on a boat on the 17th of Feb. 13th. 13th of Feb, there you go. Can I ask how much that was? I'm sure people would be interested. 2,000, around, don't quote me, this yeah, is off the top of my head. It was about 2,000, about two and a half thousand pounds. Yeah, about two and a half thousand pounds. Right. Um, We're gonna do, um, I'm gonna do a whole blog post on it. To We're gonna, on the yeah, wall. we'll try and yeah. put it in a video, like, because yeah. everyone was, uh, the, the biggest question we we ask is you've been out longer than your MOT. How does that all work? Yes, that's always so the yeah. that's always the question. Yeah, your that's MOTs run out. Are you legal? Yeah. But, but um, anyway, back to the ship. Oh yeah, go back to the ship. Yeah. Stay on track. I told you we could talk a lot. That's um, fine. We can we can too. <laughs> we can edit it all down to ten minutes. Beautiful. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're going to Charleston, and then the the plan is we're basically going to spend three or four months driving across the south of the states where we haven't worked out yet we're not that mm. organized um to get to san diego for sort of springtime oh, late spring late spring and then we mm. will assess so there's there's a few options to drive around the world which is our mission mm. um we would have to ship to south, south korea, korea. Uh, but it relies on Russia opening its land borders mm. and at the moment russia's land borders are closed or China, mm -hmm. and at the moment, China won't let you through because of COVID and their land borders are still closed. And yeah. there isn't really another option to drive around the world because Thailand, if you ship to Malaysia and go up through Thailand, Thailand doesn't allow camper vans. So oh. you can't, there isn't that. a route. So to drive around yeah. the world, those are those, on, you've only got those sort of two routes, China or yeah. Russia, and both of them are actually pretty complicated. In fact, uh, for the record, Singapore and Thailand do not allow vehicles with beds and kitchens in them. So we could get to Malaysia, wow. but, you, but then where do you go? If you can't go, even if you manage to get permission to drive through Thailand, mm -hmm. Myanmar's yeah. closed, um, you know, because of all the problems there. And even if you got to sort of Bangladesh, Pakistan, India, you, for a British vehicle to drive through Iran is a problem. Yeah. Mm. So, you know, it's that route is is not good. So for us, it's Russia or China. Yeah, uh, and they're both they are both quite complex. But we are constantly um, monitoring the situation um, mm. to nomadically hedge our bet on a plan. Yeah, I predict that we won't be able to go all the way mm -hmm. this year. So I predict that we'll get to San Diego and sort of say it's still not open. So yeah. then what we'll do is we'll drive up to Alaska. Yeah. Um, and yes. then do Vancouver, go up to the top of Alaska, come down through through Canada, through Michigan where I lived as a kid, and then probably spend uh, the whole of the winter in Mexico. Or uh, or I want to go further south. Oh yeah, but, mm. but like or or just say, well we actually might as well carry on south and just yeah. At least do some of Central America. I'd love yeah. to Well go we're probably end, gonna end up in the bottom of Argentina going, How did this happen? But yeah. um and then, ship to <laughs> and, and then ship to Russia. Yeah. Um, but there is a problem because Nicaragua, which is like, you know, um, in that thin part of joining sort of North and South America, Nicaragua doesn't yeah. allow right and drive vehicles. So... What? Yeah. Oh. You've done your research here, haven't you? I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, there's a few countries actually that don't. So There are two options. You can 
bribe the, the guards on the border. Apparently or, you can do right. that. You, you can know, do you that. can slip them a, or, a, a, a bit of Or we actually cash, have friends that we met in Turkey who have done extensive travelling. He actually oh. removed the steering wheel from the right hand side, <laughs> put a, a piece of tube, drilled a hole in the dashboard and had it so it looked like he was steering and driving. And the other one was using the gear, driving changing like a, the gear. Like go -kart. And the woman, she actually <laughs> had a piece of wood across the steering wheel block and was actually riding it like a bicycle and turning it like a bicycle. Um, I wouldn't say that's <laughs> ideal though. I mean, to, to, to be fair, there's, there is probably a, a way we could ship from, El from somewhere to Costa Rica. Right. just to bypass Nicaragua yeah. if we had to. Yeah. Um, and that's why so many people go, they go there, you know, like leave everything and wonder, Sarah and Luca, they bought mm. a, yes. a left-hand drive left -hand vehicle drive. because of that reason. Yeah. Um, right. But to be honest, there's, we've learned that actually having, being a little bit older and having gone through chaos in our life, we actually are brilliant problem solvers and mm. we're exceptional researchers and mm. we're very good communicators. So we've realised that we have a super set of skills to yeah. adapt. Um, adapt and be really flexible and make it happen so yeah. whether i have to pay somebody with um, a big recovery vehicle put trudy on the back and drive that through nicaragua i can do that um or we can one. maybe ship exactly or we yeah. can ship from it will make a good there. video yeah we'll make good content. It. I was thinking isn't, that. isn't that the yeah. beauty of doing youtube you know every time there's a disaster you go oh at least it will make a good video yeah. you know yeah. my van's falling apart but at least it will make a good video yeah absolutely and, and yeah. i think you just have to get on with it don't you, you just have to find you just a you just need to do but so really the the future is unknown we, we have yeah. a mission to drive around the world but you know will it Will it happen this year yeah. or next year? I don't know. Will we end up doing, you know, saying we're going down to Argentina? Will we ship to Australia? I don't Japan. know. Japan? Maybe I go don't to know. South Korea and spend uh, three or four months in Japan? I, I don't, don't know. know. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Oh, all we'll, of we'll those. We'll find somewhere. All of those oh, all options. Of them. Yes. I don't know how, I don't know whether Trudy will keep going to do all of them. Yeah. But we'll, <laughs> she's quite yeah. an old man. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. How are you? How are you funding this? If you don't mind me asking, of course YouTube's going to be able to be part of that. Um, yeah, is it so your savings? The rest of it is the sale of your house. Yeah, you so, that? I mean, obviously, well, when we obviously when above. we yeah, it's all of the above. When we when we when we started, it was just purely the house rental. So mm. to backtrack, we got a house. The mortgage was paid off. We managed to pay it off early. So we were like, rent the house, don't sell it it will give you a steady income and that's Perfect. what that's that's what we lived we started off living off for the first first year or and so and it was why, quite hard yeah, it was tough in central but... america we were spending uh five dollars a night um each in mixed hostels in mixed hostels <laughs> i was on the top bunk chris was on the bottom bunk in fact i fell out of the bed in you the did. middle of the that's night a story. that's a whole nother story uh because i had not been in a bunk bed since i was a child <laughs> but yeah so it was tough at the beginning wasn't it um so yeah, yeah. So, so the house rental is one Obviously, YouTube, you know, once you hit those those levels of 4,000 hours and, mm. and, you know, 1,000 subscribers, you you can um, monetize your channel. It's a, it's a very unpredictable thing, YouTube income, but mm. it yeah. is, we do, we do get enough to, to keep the travels going now. It's, yeah. it's a steady, it's a steady income. It goes really? up and down each month. And that's when you see the adverts during the video, you know, yeah. you get a small payment. Mm. Yeah. Um, we we also um get sponsorship offers Yay! Um, <laughs> you know so so some sometimes but um, i mean the key for us is to only recommend products or services that we genuinely like because yeah. Absolutely. You know, we get emails, probably like yourselves, probably like yeah. so many people. You get emails saying, "Can you promote this gaming channel?" I'm like, "Bamboo bikinis." No. I got one you know, for a bamboo bikini today. Chris does not look good in a no, bikini. Never just happened. for the record, never happened. it's not going to happen. <laughs> but things, you know, things like you know the VPN company we've used for years, or mm. you know a product that we use. If, yeah. if they say to us, "Can you promote our product and we'll give you some money for doing so?" Yeah. I'll say, "Yeah," because I use it anyway. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. You know? Video integrations, um, then. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we do video integrations we also sell merch mm. yeah um <laughs> here's one i modeled yeah, I earlier um, yeah, <laughs> beautifully modeled yes exactly and you don't get loads but it's a little bit yeah. 
Um, yeah. Affiliate affiliate links. Uh, you get some money from affiliate links. Of In course. fact, it's a funny um, it's a funny beast actually. This lifestyle because when we first started, um, when we finally reached the stage where the mortgage was paid and the kids had left home on their own epic adventures of life, uh, yeah. and we decided to do this, our eldest son was about to go to Australia for two years, wow. and uh, with his girlfriend who's a teacher, and he actually said to us. You should make YouTube videos. I've never picked up a camera before. No, and I looked at him and I said, do I look anything like the Kardashians? Are you absolutely <laughs> out of your tiny mind? <laughs> um, and he looked at me and he said, but Dad watches like Cara and Nate and... I used to watch like the Indie Projects and, and so you know, like... like why don't you just do what they're doing? And I was like, I don't even know what this is. And so I've always been me. a bit of a workaholic anyway. Yes, um, yeah. You know, so so I was like, that's great. That would give me something to focus on, yeah. something to do. Yeah, right. Yeah. And, and so that was it. I just but, bought a GoPro when, and started. Yeah, but when we actually Brilliant. started to get an income and we could buy a, a coffee, we could share a I coffee. I was so excited. We were so excited. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I realised that actually there was an income and money isn't a dirty word when you right. have to live and feed yourself and right. pay Everybody bills. Everybody else needs so, money. So yeah. for me, it was like, oh my God, this is actually turning into a job. And mm. we have teetered on the edge of being exhausted and thinking, should we pull back a bit or should we carry on? Yeah. And we've now reached that tipping point now where actually we go, no, you know, hell yeah, we love travel. We want to be able to afford to spend 2,600 to put Trudy on a boat to America. Yeah. Because yeah. then we've got to and pay it's... for one year's insurance for America, Canada and Mexico. And, and, and travel, insurance, travel insurance, road insurance. And it cost, I think, to ship yeah. back from yeah. Istanbul was 2,600 pounds. And yeah. then all the work on the van. Yeah. And that, the only reason we've got that money is because... Yeah. We were in Turkey where we didn't spend a lot of money, yeah. you know, the exchange rates on our side. Yeah, yeah. yeah um, we work hard, you make videos, we sell merch, we'll do uh, authentic and realistic um, integrations with companies that we're happy to work with. Yeah. And actually, we should take full advantage of living our dream because after all, isn't exactly. that what we're all trying to do? And, 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 as I always yeah. say, yes. the, more, the more money, you know, we didn't do this lifestyle to earn money, but no. the more money no. we're able to earn, yeah. the better travels we're able to do yeah. Which means the better experience we're able to put on a video for we people to no watch. We had no idea yeah. that we could monetize what we were doing. Mm. I, I, I generally, I can remember the first time I'm like, oh my god, I've earned a coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I bet it tasted the best coffee you've ever drunk. It was, oh, it did it taste was. amazing. It, it was, was the best. Yeah, and it and was. you know, when you when you, I think our budget when we were backpacking Central America was thirty dollars mm. a day. Mm -hmm. That was transport, mm. food, and accommodation. Yeah. you know and yeah. it was tight it was it really, was really tight. We'd, tight we'd go out and have one big meal a day yeah. and sleep in hostels but we've always um, dreamt big you know when we were i was just thinking then we were i was sat on the pavement on my mobile phone with my three minutes talking to a plan um, in thatcher and they're the people that insure trudy and wow. uh they they gave us free insurance and and i said to him look i'm thinking about i'm thinking big here we want to drive around the world can we we might do it in trudy or we might get like an old toyota land cruiser and convert right. it before we even think about planning and building a land, cru a land cruiser and putting a kitchen in it can you tell me which one is the easiest one to ensure because retrospectively i don't want to solve a problem so yeah. could you do that and he said marianne whatever you do we'll support you and we'll actually pay for your insurance uh in the uk and, the, and europe and that was the, that was the first incredibly sponsor. crazy so, and when we didn't really have and any that was followers. our first sponsor and it was at that um, moment sat on a pavement in uh i think it was where was it guatemala yeah it was i was guatemala. sat on the pavement uh with cars whizzing past and i looked at chris and i went Oh my God, we We're just are going to get a sponsor. <laughs> we can get sponsored. People actually believe in us. You yeah. know, all when we were invited to talk at the NEC before we yeah. before we left, you know, yeah. and it was like, they actually want us to talk. Um, it's quite a humbling expe yeah, it's a very experience. Humbling but I, I want Trudy to get around the world and I want to park Trudy yeah. at the NEC, inside the yeah. NEC show. How cool would that be? Thank you both so You're much welcome. for You're very taking welcome. your time. Thank you for I know us. this was longer than we It's always longer than we planned. <laughs> I'm always. sorry. I got it just. It, I love this. <laughs> this is we're gassy, aren't we? We talk a lot. We talk. We do <laughs> normally over each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's such a privilege to be able to do this. It is. To, to talk oh, to you. Thank you for having us. So we really you. appreciate Lovely. that. Thank, thank you. you. And we wish you all the You're best. And we're going to be watching your travels. Yes. Uh, really looking forward to the next part of the journey for you guys. So. Yeah. Thank you very much. Trudy at the Grand Canyon. Can't wait. Can't oh. wait. <laughs>
Oh, there's a photo. That's a thumbnail right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, guys, and we'll see you on the next one. Oh, you're still here. <laughs>